how to debugger it and do it on my phone and know how my phone works. Uh, we'll see how we go anyway. So, again, building an enclosure for some Ori Dura. Might see if I can chuck you guys in the tripod as well. Let's see what's going on. Can you guys hear me all right? Let's see how we're going here. Sweet. Hey guys. So this is an Exoterra 60 by 45 by 45. And I've got a whole bunch of foam cut up, just out of offcuts actually. I had these all lying around and I've kind of carved them up in a few different shapes. And I'm deciding to uh, just do a simple background in this one here. I'm going to see if I can get you in a tripod. Just because so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. You don't need to look at me. crappy tripod and my good ones upstairs okay hey Coop how you doing where did I get isopods and springtails in Australia I got isopods from my garden I got springtails from a friend who luckily had some and then I've just been culturing them ever since but I have seen those getting around in the garden as well So I've been having some technical difficulties. I've been trying to get a live video here set up for probably the better part of about 40 minutes. And my laptop does not want to play ball, unfortunately. What sort of foam do you use? Where do you get it? I use insulation foam from Bunnings. I prefer the Bastion brand over the Knauf brand or however you pronounce it. But essentially this is the foam that that I like using. I find that this one carves super easy versus the Knauf and plus this one's already kind of textured so if you leave, leave a little bit smooth it it kind of leaves a bit of porous texture that your your paint or your pour or your tile pointing or whatever can get into. Whereas I find if you don't take it off on the Knauf one it can be a little bit hard to use. Um, anyway I'm gonna get started here. This should be pretty simple. I've kind of already test fit everything. I'm just going to go through and basically silicon it into place. Um, yeah, should be a pretty easy one. Right, we'll see how we go. I'm just using Parfix bathroom and kitchen silicon. Nothing fancy. But yeah, Coop, he got me super inspired today and I was bored as. I had a whole bunch of foam kicking around and I thought, you know what, it's about time I clean up this enclosure and, and start it. It's been something I've been wanting to do for a while and luckily enough I had a fair bit of foam there. What a disaster. It's telling me my phone's low battery as well. That'd be about right. <laughs> Uh, the brand of foam is Bastion. Sorry guys, I'm kind of like half looking at the the foam, half, half wanting to do this. Um, yeah, Bastion. It's green foam, comes in two sizes. I think it's 30mm and 50mm thick. It's good stuff. Highly rate it. I think the, the 30mm sheet's about... 12 bucks or something from Bunnings and the 50 mil is a little bit more expensive at about $20 or something. But yeah, it's good stuff. 
I've been using it on all my builds. I was worried I had to crack out the other tube of silicon, but I might be okay here. This should be enough just to kind of tack it all into place anyway. Perfect. Yeah, dude, Coop, I could not agree more. Hey, I absolutely love the expanding of uh, the the foam like this stuff here. It's so easy to work with. Expanding foam is nothing but a pain. Absolutely hate it. I might want to put a little bit of silicon underneath that bottom one there. Alright, I'll crack out the other tube. Yeah, I find expanding foam just so hard to work with. You can't even really get the foam cutting tool, like the, uh, what do you call it? The, well yeah, it's a foam cutting tool. Uh, I, ca I can't get it through expanding foam like you can this stuff. It's just an absolute disaster. I still use it here and there just to kind of like neaten up some joins in between foam and things. Oh, not a massive fan. Not a massive fan at all. Anyway. Yeah, for those of you who are watching, I don't even know how many are on the screen there. Got 11 of you. There you go. Um, Coop released a video today that's absolutely awesome on his Pygmy Python enclosure build. So good. And that got me really inspired to finally get around to doing this one for my OE Doer Fimbria or Western Marble Velvet Geckos. And I really loved, in particular, the way that Coop was using the the foam in just kind of like a stacking composition. It made a lot of sense to me once I kind of saw it. And I, it's, it is something that I've been considering for a little while. But you really just brought it to the forefront of my mind and made me pull the trigger on it. So this is probably the first enclosure that I'll be doing in a little while that isn't actually three-sided. So, should be pretty interesting to do. We'll see how it turns out. Something that I did just forget to do then. I am actually going to be using a little bit of Tarzan's grip. Oh, well, not Tarzan's, Gorilla Glue. So this stuff's super good. Kind of expands up in between the layers of your foam. Just going to be using a little bit of it to tack in between. Keep everything nice and rigid. And then once I go over it with the tile pointing, that'll be the kind of the bulk of it all being held together with the pointing. These little geckos, they've been hanging out in the tiny little enclosure for a while now, just growing them up. That's not what I wanted to have happen. So it's about time that I got onto something for them. And don't worry about the glue that I'm getting everywhere. Razor blades, your best friend, that'll clean all that up. I've already mapped out the design and I've got all the layers just ready to chuck into place essentially. So it should be pretty neat work. Just going through and stacking this all together.
Uh, this size exoterra enclosure is 60 centimeters long, 45 deep, 45 tall. Used to house my Perron's tree frogs until they went down to, to live with Cam. I just wanted to see if I could muck around with another one and get another enclosure done for some of the other animals that are kicking around here. Been a little bit bored today. Not been much on thanks to the lockdown, so just been hanging out at home. Didn't really have a need to, to go anywhere, so sort of muck around a little bit and see what I can get done here. I was thinking about doing some some 30 centimeter cubes. I've got three or so over there that you probably can't see. But uh yeah, decided I'll just get this done instead. It shouldn't honestly take me too long. And the longest thing that's going to take me to do is get the bloody glue out of the, the jar. Like most of my supplies, they're a little bit low at the moment. Not being able to go up to Bunnings. So right. Oh, let's go in through this way. Perfect. Yeah, I've kind of already, as I said, got this kind of mapped out all over the place. As to how I want it to go. If I run out of glue, I'll just use silicon. Silicon's pretty good at sticking stuff together as well. I can't remember how Cam does it. I think Cam actually uses this glue to to stick everything together. I don't think he actually even uses silicon, if I'm not mistaken. I'm keen to see what you're going to do for a Gillen's enclosure coop. I've got a few ideas about what I want to do for a few, a few enclosures for Gillen's. But uh, yeah, I'm really keen to see what you do for that little fella there. Yeah, I considered to kind of like go past on my way home from the physio today. It was like the one thing that I went and did. But no, I'm not going to break the rules just for a few supplies. So that would be good. There's going to be a little gap there. Still going to be a bit tall. Wanted to put something in there just to fill it a little bit. Nothing too crazy. You know what? I'm just going to use the silicon. This glue can be so sticky. This silicon can come off a little easier. So I will be going over this enclosure 
once it's all finished with the, um, the foam tool again, just to kind of give it a little bit more detail. I thought this might just be a good start. Find something to do for today. Bits. Done. That's today's effort at least. Not too bad. So, this will be good fun for the tile pointing, that's for sure. I tried to leave a fair bit of a gap underneath here just so then when I had to get the tile pointing down into here I could do that from a reasonably safe distance whereas if I did this really really high part down the bottom here for example then it would be really hard to get under. I am planning on potentially adding in some other rock structures like facing up over this way but they'll be kind of removable structures as well. But I wanted to keep, kind of leave a couple of little divots where the geckos can kind of really get into. I'll just cut that silicon out of the place. But yeah, it'll be good fun to paint, like most of them. I think I might actually take the vinyl off the sides of this as well and end up going over it with spray paint just so I can get a bit more of an even finish. Or if I can get my hands on some vinyl, then I'll do that. But I think this is one of the most shoddy vinyl jobs that I've done. And that's gonna irk me that it's not that perfect right up along the edge there. And down the bottom here. But yeah, we'll see how we go. I think it came out all right. I'll have to wait till this glue dries to get it off the front of the glass, but that's okay. Yeah, it should be pretty pretty cool. Yeah, on this one, Bailey, I'm just going to do the the back of the enclosure. I might add a few more pieces in around the sides, but I just don't know how I'm going to blend it, to be quite honest. I'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, in this enclosure, Harley, there's going to be Oedua Fimbria, so the Western Marble Velvet Geckos, which are well and truly adapt to getting around some rock crevices and things. So yeah, that, this will be for them. They're going to run around on the glass anyway, but I might just leave it as a back back wall of this enclosure. Not a hundred percent sure yet. If I do, if I do blend it, I'll just kind of buy another panel and end up just cutting strips just to kind of, you know, keep the same thickness and and whatnot, and just kind of have them coming out here and blend them across. And we'll see how we go with that. Not a hundred percent sure what I want to do there yet. I might do it. I might not. But yeah. Bit of fun. Bit of fun. Feeling pretty fresh with this new haircut. But yeah, apart from that, there's a few critters getting around at the moment. My big green's looking pretty uncomfortable. Not 100% sure if she's grabbing or not, but she does look pretty big at the moment. In fact, I am, I could potentially say she might be even ovulating a little bit at the moment. We'll see. The little male's been doing pretty good. Yeah, she is thick. This glass isn't helping because I've been leaving him reasonably dirty. Yeah, they're beautiful little animals. I love these guys. So yeah, that's been happening. The garage is an absolute mess because we're moving house soon as well. So we're trying to clear out our storage unit a bit. There's old Sonic. Loki is sleeping at the moment. Haven't seen much of him lately. The dragons are still a little bit active, but that's about it. The the monitors I'm not seeing a hell of a lot of. The Boyd's Forest Dragons are pretty chill. As far as humidity goes for the green tree pythons, they don't actually have a lot of ventilation in their enclosure. Like that vent there and the gap in between the glass is all the, all the ventilation that they have. 
Uh, let's see if we can see the archers. EJ hooked me up with some archer fish the other day. So, Loki's tank is absolutely packed full of fish at the moment. There you go, there's two of them. These guys are looking pretty fat at the moment because they've been hunting my little guffy population here, which is fine. There's plenty of them to go around, that's for sure. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, what else has been happening? Not much. Let me just read the comments for a sec. Yeah, so Harley, I also just spray down the enclosure occasionally. They do have some live plants in there as well to, to kind of keep the humidity up a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if Jason was actually going to see this at all, uh, all Josh. So we kind of have a little bit of a, a laughing game where, you know, each, each week when we do the, the podcast and we record the podcast, we, we can like change our names or whatever. So I think last week when I was on with Cooper, we, I named myself Gil, uh, Gil and I Guru, but I think tomorrow I'm going to name myself Jason 2.0 just to kind of stir him up and then come on with my, my fresh head. Just to get just to get a little rise out of him. Harley, you'll be fine with, with green trees in Sydney. I think you'll be absolutely fine. In all honesty, there's a lot of people that keep them here. So you'll be right. So this is the Boyd's enclosure, or the Boyd's future enclosure. I'll give you a bit of a bit of a look. There will be a video eventually of this one that comes out. At the moment I've just got I'm not planting it just because we're we're going to be moving and the enclosure is already reasonably heavy so i figured i may as well wait until we move and then get some of these plants into it you can see i'm doing great with a couple of them um but yeah got a nice little i think it's a native grape this one here yeah going to plant the crevice coop so the the plan is to have something growing out of it the whole way around even if it's something simple like I might even just pinch some wandering dew or something from out the back to be quite honest. And I tested it out. If I put water into the top over here, it physically runs the whole way around and then just kind of dribbles back down into the enclosure down here. So it should physically work to to have it, you know, you can kind of see that there's a bit of an angle on it. I've done that the whole way around just to kind of keep the moisture in the back of it there. Thanks, Brad. Getting there. So, got a, got a bit of stuff going on. You right, Billy? Ho, 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 The beard is getting lush. Look, you can see my mask kink from when I went to the physio. It's horrible. Hey, Jesse's Reptiles, how you going? Yeah, so this is the build that, you know, for those of the, you that are just joining in, I just kind of quickly tacked all this together. This is going to be for my Odura, Odura Fimbria. Pretty cool little enclosure. Very, very muchly inspired by Cooper's new video. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure to go and check out Coop's Reptiles over on YouTube as well. He's just dropped it today and used a whole bunch of products that I'm really fond of. He's got T5 UVB in there. He's got a nice deep heat projector for his Pygmy Python. Crushed granite on the substrate. Oh, that got me excited. But yeah, a few, a few enclosures here. I will kind of just give you guys a sneak peek. So some of the enclosures that I've been putting together have gone to shit. I'm not going to lie. Tristus, there's a lot of heat in that enclosure and I've been struggling to find a good plant choice as to what's going on there. So I will be replanting that once I do move. Whereas other enclosures, for example, like prickly forest skink, cranking along. Tree ferns loving it. The bird's nest fern's almost outgrown the enclosure already. So that enclosure is doing fantastic. Got one of the brown tree snake enclosures here. This Banksy is doing pretty well in here at the moment. This is like the third plant that I've tried in here. I'm not sure if it's something to do with like the substrate mix that I've got there. But yeah, that one's going all right. Got the other brown tree snake enclosure next to that as well. Bird's nest fern's doing as good as ever. This enclosure here went to hell. I did have a Callistamon and a Grevillea doing really, really well in there, but I don't know exactly what happened to them. They, they, were, they did well for months and then all of a sudden just dropped, so I'll be playing around with that. Um, what else have we got? These leaftail, and ge uh, leaftail gecko enclosures houses my Cornutus. 
this one's cranking along pretty good. I haven't really had to do too much to this one here. Same as the one with the... Um, what have we got in that one? That's a Moritz leaf-tailed gecko in that enclosure. I just need to scrub up a bit of the, the droppings off the wall, but that enclosure has been pr doing pretty good all over and all. Had a few little gnats actually turn up in that enclosure, so... Don't know what that's all about. Oops, kicking foam over here. But yeah, most animals are pretty sleepy at the moment, so I haven't actually been in here a hell of a lot. Might just check out these patchy gill and I, because I do love my gillens. So you can see a chunk of carrot in there. I always leave carrot in the enclosures, just so when I chuck a whole bunch of crickets in there, they don't accidentally go to town on my lizards. These guys are due for a bit of a clean as well. There we go. Five little beauties. You can see that one there is a little bit tinier than the rest. That got them excited. Yeah, they're cranking along. Very happy to have these guys here. I'm looking forward to putting them in an enclosure, hopefully sooner rather than later, but I'll probably wait until I move again. Just let them kind of grow up a little bit more in here, especially during winter. I'd rather have them in a little plastic tub just because it'll hold the heat a lot better than something like a, a glass box, unless I insulate it with foam and backgrounds and all the rest of it. But we'll see how we go. <laughs> um. As far as different methods, I didn't do anything new, Coop. I really didn't. I think it was just a, you know, it was a good bunch of eggs. They just seem to do really well. This camera's not doing them justice at the moment. They are honestly stunning little lizards. Oh. Come here, mate. Absolutely stunning little lizards. I know. The big hairy monkey's got you. I find these guys absolutely fascinating. I don't know what it is about them. I just like how secretive they are. I like how brazen they can be. I like their tree dwelling nature. You know, I think if I had, if I got stuck with one species, this would be it, definitely. Definitely got a few kicking around at the moment. I haven't seen much out of my adult pair. They're hiding in there somewhere. And I've got another pair in there. These guys are just being kept super simple at the moment so I can keep a really solid eye on them. There's a pair in there as well. And then I do have two other females down in these enclosures here. Again, just being kept, kept simply for the time being, just making sure they're eating, making sure they're doing all the right things, which they are. So, got to be stoked about that. Loki, he is good. He's not eating a hell of a lot at the moment. He's uh, currently sleeping. I did catch him out this morning. He came out for a quick bask and that was about it. So apart from that, I haven't really been seeing a hell of a lot of him. He's um, just being typical old Loki. Usually quietens down this time of year. I only feed him usually about once a week this time of year. Um, versus two or three times a week, like most other times a year. So, no, he's all right. He's doing his thing. It's kind of good timing about all this, you know, housing stuff's coming around, you know, moving house and stuff like that. So, been able to kind of deal with all that. And Billy the Prilly. Oh, you didn't like that, did you, bud? This guy can be pretty grumpy. Chunky old boy. I'm giving everyone a stink eye. <laughs> yeah, no, everything's going alright. Lots of sleepy lizards. 
Lots of sleepy snakes. Just waiting for it all to kind of crack off again. September, October, November. I'll be straight back into it and hopefully by then I'm completely moved into my new place and got all these animals with me. Check out this little lizard. Seltorarius Wyberba. There's a few of them in this box. There's actually five of them in here and they can be a little bit hard to find, but these guys, as far as leaf tail geckos, if I was to chuck some crickets in there now, um, he'd actually smash them during the middle of the day. But yeah, he's pretty well camouflaged. Tried to make a pretty good background in the sense that I wanted, to, wanted them to blend in a little bit. Probably could have painted it a little bit better now that I look at it, but you know, you live and you learn. All these things, it's just all practice and one day we'll be able to all make some pretty cool enclosures. Anyway guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you all for joining in and saying good day. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next video. I am planning to film a couple of videos and stuff. Got a few things in the works, but yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit hard to get a few things done at the moment. So with all the stuff going on, on with the house and moving and all the rest of it. But anyway, I'll keep you all updated. Take it easy. Cheers.